We're asked to solve the proportion. And we have 8 36 is equal to 10 over what? Or 8 to 36, or the ratio of 8 over 36 is equal to the ratio of 10 to what? And there's a bunch of different ways to solve this, and I'll explore really all of them, or not all of them, or a good selection of them. So one way to think about it is that these two need to be equivalent ratios, or really equivalent fractions. So whatever happened to the numerator also has to happen to the denominator. So what do we have to multiply 8 by to get 10? Well, you could multiply 8 times 10 over 8 will definitely give you 10. So we're multiplying by 10 over 8 over here. Or another way to write 10 over 8, 10 over 8 is the same thing as 5 over 4. So we're multiplying by 5 over 4 to get to 10, from 8 to 10. Well, if we did that to the numerator, in order to have an equivalent fraction, you have to do the same thing to the denominator. You have to multiply it. You have to multiply it times 5 over 4. And so we could say this n, this thing that we need to solve for, this n is going to be equal to 36 times 5 divided by 4. Or you could say that this is going to be equal to 36 times 5 divided by 4. And now 36 divided by 4, we know what that is. We could divide both the numerator and the denominator by 4. You divide the numerator by 4, you get 9. Divide the denominator by 4, you get 1. You get 45. So that's one way to think about it. 8 over 36, 8 over 36 is equal to 10 over 45. Another way to think about it is, how much what do we have to multiply by 8 by to get its denominator? How much larger is the denominator 36 than 8? Well, let's just divide 36 over 8. So 36 over 8 is the same thing as, so we can simplify dividing the numerator and the denominator by 4. That's their, that's their greatest common divisor. That's the same thing as 9 halves. So when you, if you multiply the numerator by 9 halves, you get the denominator. So we're multiplying by 9 halves to get the denominator over here. Well, then we have to do the same thing over here. If, this, if 36 is 9 halves times 8, let me write this. 36, or let me write 8 times 9 halves is equal to, is equal to 36. Right? That's how we go from the numerator to the denominator. Then to figure out what the denominator I here is, if we want the same fraction, we have to multiply by 9 halves again. So then we'll get 10 times 9 halves is going to be equal to n, is going to be equal to this denominator. And so this is the same thing as saying 10 times 9 over 2. Divide the numerator and the denominator by 2, you get 5 over 1, which is 45. So 45 is equal to n. Once again, we got the same way, completely legitimate way to solve it. Now sometimes when you see a proportion like this, some, sometimes people say, oh, you can cross multiply. And you can cross multiply, and I'll teach you how to do that. And that's sometimes a quick way to do it. But I don't like teaching it the first time you look at proportions, because it's really just something mechanical. You really don't understand what you're doing. And it really comes out of a little bit of algebra. And I'll show you the algebra as well. But if you don't understand it, if it doesn't make as much sense to you at this point, don't worry too much about it. So we have 8 over 36 is equal to 10 over n. When you cross multiply, you're saying that the numerator here times the denominator over here is going to be equal to, so 8 times n is going to be equal to the, new, the denominator over here, the denominator over here, let me do this in a different color, the denominator over here times the numerator over here. This is what it means to cross multiply. So this is going to be equal to 36 times 10, 36 times 10. Or you could say, you could say, let me do this in a neutral color now. You could say that 8n is equal to 360. And so you're saying 8 times what is equal to 360. Or to figure out what that times what is, you divide 360 divided by 8. So we could divide, and this is a little bit of algebra here. We're dividing both sides of the equation by 8. And we're getting n is equal to 360 divided by 8. And you, know, you could do that without thinking in kind of strict algebraic terms. You could say 8 times what is 360. Well, 8 times 360 over 8. If I write 8 times question mark is equal to 360, well, question mark could definitely be 360 over 8. If I multiply these out, this guy and that guy cancel out, and it's definitely 360. And that's why it's 360 over 8. But now we want to actually divide this to actually get our right answer, or a simplified answer. 8 goes into 360. 8 goes into 36 4 times. 4 times 8 is 32. You have a remainder of 4, bring down the 0. 8 goes into 45 times. 
5 times 8 is 40, and then you have no remainder and then you have no remainder. And you're done. Once again, we got n is equal to n is equal to 45. Now the last way I'm going to show you involves a little bit of algebra. If any of the ways before this work, that's fine. And where this is sitting in the playlist, you're not expected to know the algebra. But I want to show you the algebra just because I wanted to show you that this cross multiplication isn't some magic. That using algebra, we will get this exact same thing. But you could stop watching this if, you, if you'll find this part confusing. So let's, let's rewrite our proportion. 8 over 36 is equal to 10 over n. And we want to solve, we want to solve for n. Well, the easiest way to solve for n is maybe multiply both this thing on the left is equal to this thing on the right. So we can multiply them both by the same thing and the equality will still hold. So we can mul multiply both of them, both of them by n. On the right hand side the n's cancel out. On the left hand side we have 8 36 times n is equal to 10. Now if we want to solve for n, we can literally multiply. If we want, to, if we want just an n here, we could, we'd want to multiply this side times 36. We'll do that in a different color. We'd want to multiply this, times, this side times 36 times 8. Because if you multiply these guys out, you get 1, and you just have an n. But since we're doing it to the left-hand side, we also have to do it to the right-hand side. So times 36 over 8. These guys cancel out, and we're left with n is equal to 10 times 36 is 360 over 8. And notice we're getting the exact we're getting the exact same value that we got with cross multiplying. And with cross multiplying, you're actually doing you're actually doing two steps. Actually, you're doing an extra step here. You're multiplying both sides by n so that you get your 8n, and then you're multiplying both sides by 36 so that you get your your three your your 36 on both sides, and you get this value here. But at the end, when you simplify it, you'll get the exact same answer. So those are all different ways to solve this proportion. Probably the most obvious way, or the the easiest way to do it in your head, was well. Either just looking at what you have to multiply the numerator by and then doing the denominator doing the same thing to the denominator, or maybe by cross multiplication.